I think, uh, yeah, Seventh Symphony, we are really highly excited, the entire band, about the album, because uh, we concentrated when beginning to do it. Uh, we wanted to capture like all the strengths of our band into the album, and of course realizing that live show, live performance is one of the key elements probably behind this. And so how to capture that feeling of playing live into the studio record that the, the audience who is listening to the album would would go into the same energy level than what we have in playing. And so those were really important things also uh, that affected a lot to the like, writing process of the songs that we basically had more rough structures when we went into studio and a lot of like improvised above all these ideas to have this feeling of really performing at the moment and in, a, in every every day how it sounds and feels and the feeling was really in important for us um, I would combine it actually that it, this new album it kind of has the attitude of cult which is one of the most important albums for our band because there we began basically the own thing stepping over from uh, the covers and uh, so this cult album done in 2000, it was really full of young energy and this kind of rebellion attitude. And we wanted to get the same feeling still after, after all these years, but of course now with the updated sounds and like uh, the skills what we have learned throughout the in entire journey. So therefore, I, I think it's really, really nice and exciting combination of best possible apocalyptic elements. Yeah, actually, th that was a really good good idea and very exciting and even scary thing for ourselves because, of course, going back into the academy place, into the hall where we have played a lot, and uh, also without any effects and completely as a classical thing to ha play little new versions out of some tracks, a couple of elder songs as well. Uh, it was really like a high high concentration thing, and uh, therefore I think it's wonderful, like. Uh, fan favor actually to have such a uh, such a dvd where we really show what is the original cello and uh, all, all of this and I actually i really like the the final result it, it went well have you ever done any shows before as your alma mater in any academy and not actually this was first time that we went as apocalyptic to play in severus uh, academy of course in the 90s, in mid of 90s, everything was rehearsed in there, and actually, first album was recorded in the Sibelius Academy Studios. But we <laughs> we have been avoiding that place <laughs> ever since. But uh, I think, yeah, Seventh Symphony kind of brought us into the beginning as well. As, uh, like uh, as human beings, we concentrated more to take care of our personal relations. That's the only way to survive still for uh, longer years and uh, very important thing. So we we lot of where we're thinking of why we w began to do this like 15 years ago and we need to get the same fresh passion and same kind of feeling of trying experiment new things and uh, therefore I, I think we really managed because the album sounds it's really f refreshing strange music in uh, in its best and uh, variety of the songs it's also like a really bringing Basically, all the songs, they are pretty different from each other. The main reason might be that we just wanted to collect the key, key elements and all the different kind of stuff we have tried throughout the years and bring it into one package. And suddenly it began to feel like a very, very solid unit. And we wanted to name it as a symphony because of that general mood that is going throughout the entire album. It kind of keeps the hold. Even we bring you to different dimensions I, from purely classical moments to extreme 80s trash metal, uh, still the cello kind of unites the feeling. And uh, also, I think this time, it, even the vocal co cooperations, they work pretty well supporting this general idea of a kind of symphony. And for our ears, it's very logical to have like different storytellers in there, always hear a little new angle, new way of, of the same, same general story.
mostly we have uh, we just try to do the songs and ma- most times the song determines one one type of vocals and uh, especially this time i think we were concentrating more to capture exciting characters rather than just to pick all the possible biggest names that you probably are offered to work with uh, it was more like uh, for example end of me the first single it's the most typical or traditional rock song from the album well we, we didn't want to arrange it as very traditional song or to ask the most typical rock vocalist in there so therefore actually Gavin Rossdale is, is a brilliant voice because um, his way of kind of tell the story when he's singing it's very is- exciting and therefore I, th- I think fitting very well into the our music but hey we have a surprise guest in here who finally shows his respect Hello, Paavo. How are you? Was it a good shit? <sighs> no, I wasn't doing that. By the way, do you do any cello training? I have been teaching cello students for many years. And unfortunately, I have had no time for mm-hmm. uh, four years anymore. But it's, uh, it's a big fun mm-hmm. to work with uh, young people. And it's, of course, it's challenging. And it's a lot of, lot of joy. And uh, of course, I have been teaching them basically normal classical cello playing. But on the side, I have also teach some apocalyptical stuff. And if they have practiced well there, all the other lessons. And, and they, al- I have also had like a chamber music uh, sessions with uh, different cello groups who are, who has been playing some apocalyptic music, and it's been. A lot of fun. They, the young people, the youngsters, they really, really love doing that. And actually, in Finland, and all, all Europe, there's a lot of cello bands nowadays, and it's really, it's. I, I'm, I'm really happy to see that development at the moment in a classical scene. It has been always actually really difficult to determine what specific kind of music apocalyptica is. We we once called it like cello rock because in general it is more rock music maybe than any other. But uh, extreme strange cello disturbance, violence, romance, sexy, classical, trash, modern, improvi- improvising music. It's it's apocalyptic music. So you, you, you also play with uh, singer, with drummer, what's next for apocalyptic drummer? First you did the really development, maybe you will invite bass player or guitarist. Uh, I would really love to work with this barking bulldog that you see in YouTube where there is this powerful heavy metal band and the bulldog is... <laughs> it would be cool. Dogs out. <laughs> no, maybe no. animal quest guests. Yeah, maybe the animal, the drummer. You know, he could be really cool to play on the side of Mikko. There, in that case, there would be two animals on the stage. Actually, in this album, Seventh Symphony, we quite a kind of surprisingly, not intentionally, but surprisingly, found a lot of exciting effects out from animal world. So there is a lot of like whale sounds and we just rea- suddenly realized while recording that, wow, no, no, it really sounds like uh, humpback whales making love, this track. And uh, it, it was Pertu singing and me singing, so, but it sounds pretty similar. Uh, hmm? For these cooperations, uh, on this album there is a song called 2010 and there is a two drummers playing. So there is a Dave Lombardo from Slayer and our drummer Mikko. Mikko Minus. Mikko Minus, yeah. They did a session in LA so that they had like a, two drum kits facing each other in a studio room and they started to play and jamming together and that was basically the, the starting point for the song. And thinking about this 
So there, in that song, there's a two drummers playing at the same time. Th that would be really cool to have one sup extra, uh, like a special gig with a with a Dave, to join to the stage. That would be something. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, drumming. Yeah, competition. Yeah, uh, at least my musical taste, taste, it goes always in a cycles. And for example, there might be one year that I don't want to listen to anything else except opera, just to get rid of all this. But uh, actually, during this album ma making and uh, this year, it has been more probably going towards the rock music and uh, heavy. I don't know, it's really interesting that you can change uh, and how, how it goes through an evolution all the time. And, and now, actually, just this summer or something, I, I really began to listen to that 20 years old music that I fell in love as a teenager. Like I told you in, in the beginning, that kind of feels as a group at the moment that we are having the same kind of attitude and feeling than what, when we began. And therefore, I found myself as well going back into this teenage fan kind of thing that I took again all this testament and Judas Priest and Iron Maiden records that I loved like 20 years ago and it, it's really funny to see how it goes in circles. Yeah, as you asked about the classical music, it's, it's always surrounding us. It's our history, our past. Uh, I'm still listening to classical music sometimes, you know, I just a couple of days. Uh, okay, uh, ago we were having like a two, two, three days break. I went to my summer house in an island and listened only Mozart <laughs> to get rid of all this metal scene. And, but on the way to my summer ho house, I, I was listening uh, some Finnish music, and you sh should check them out. For example, Kizu is one Finnish dark mooded pop act. Okay, sh she's singing in Finnish, but still you can get something out of it. And then there's a really cool uh, coming band called Stamina. It's, a, it's more for me metal act, and it's really revolutionary, I would say, and really good stuff. And they are singing also in Finnish, but it doesn't matter. You don't need to understand the, the lyrics to enjoy the music. Yeah, we have played it maybe 10 or 20 times, but it's too difficult song. We don't know how to play it. <laughs> no, it's emotionally difficult, actually. And uh, of course, we, with the ballads, we have always the biggest problem in the set list that we would have so much really, really beautiful tracks throughout all these re records, and there is no places for too many ballads in a, in a set. But actually, uh, this year we, we just began like a new thing to have a really acoustic classical moment in a show and uh, I think it's really cool. A little bit the same, same thing that now we had this, the DVD acoustic. We have played a lot of acoustic radio shows and there, there is like an unplugged side of Apocalyptica and we want to bring it also into the rock club and play a couple of ballads in a row and especially some material from a new album, they are so purely natural acoustic without uh, distortions that uh, we have a special mic microphone system for them and really to give a little rest for audience ears and then bring it back to the maybe once we could have a, like a concert where we play only the ballads but yeah it, it either the valentine or mother's day yeah, this okay. romantic apocalyptic go romance yeah it would be but i'm pretty sure that the audience would would fell asleep, so they should bring their own pillow and pajama. Yeah, that. it's not in a rock venue either, nor, nor, nor in a classical venue, there should be only beds for audience. Perfect. Dark room beds. I'm in. I'm in too. Yeah. 
you know, Finland is pretty small country and it's, uh, it has always been far away from everything. So we, uh, Finland has created like a own kind of thing. There is happening some evolution uh, in, in a small circle. And maybe that's... And the national music has always been really important in Finland. So the, if you listen radios in Finland, you, you will hear maybe 80% or 70% of the music is like a national music. And that that makes the evolution faster and uh, and su- more supportive for local bands, and maybe that's one of the reasons why there is so many good bands coming from Finland. And I also think that the general attitude: so many kids they grab guitar or drums, they begin to play really early, and in Finnish mentality there must be something crazy that they really, really practice a lot and therefore they become really great instrumentalists. Uh, we don't have so much like uh, world-class vocalists in Finland but uh, in many instruments th- they, are, they are really like high, highest skillful player and, uh, and therefore of course when those guys go together it's mostly uh, many times the, the result is a very exciting band. You know, in Finland, there's a really good music school system, and it's pre- basically open for everybody. Uh, it costs something, but it's not really expensive system. And if you are from the poor family, you will get like a, even f- that for free. And uh, so everybody has a chance to get some education and some teachers. So maybe that that brings the average level to the certain category and that that makes the the quality spasiba hello hello there my name is pertu from apocalyptica And I am Pavo, and you are watching One Rock TV, of course. Hei sun heiluvilles, mun nimi on Perttu. Ja mä oon Paavo, me olemme siis puolikas apokalyptikasta tuolta Suomesta. Ja tehän katsotte yksi rokki televisiota. Katso tarkkaan. 